This is the bottom flap of section 2 of our unit 3 quadratic functions flipbook. And in this section we're going to be answering the question, what are the different names of the parts of a quadratic function graph? So you can see here your essential question class is, what are the names of the parts of a quadratic function graph? Please don't forget to write your essential question. This section is all about definitions, so as we talk about quadratic graphs, as we use the different vocabulary words, you'll be familiar with what they mean. If you would, right now, go ahead and pause the video, write your essential question, and then write down each of these names. I'll go through them. Parabola, axis of symmetry, y-intercept, vertex, minimum, maximum, x-intercept, domain and range. Fill those out. When you're done filling those out, start the video back up again and we'll start talking about what these different names or different words mean. Okay, I assume you are done filling out the essential question and the different names that we're going to define right now. So let's go through these each in order and I'll try to make sense of the graph as we define each of these words. First one is the word parabola. We've already talked about this in the flipbook. The parabola is the shape, or a parabola is the shape. I'm going to write a little bit smaller for you guys. The shape of a, quadrat a quadratic graph. The shape of a quadratic graph. So if you graph any quadratic function or equation, you're going to end up with a parabola. So the shape of a quadratic graph, hold on a second, I have a little pause, there we go. The shape of a quadratic graph. So take a look at the graph number one. You can see here is the shape. Now the shape of a quadratic graph, if it's a parabola, it's going to always look like this. It's going to either look like it's a U that's facing up, or it's going to look an, uh, like an upside down or reflected U just facing down. So these two graphs both show a parabola. I'm just going to go ahead and draw an arrow to that to show you guys there is what we're talking about when we're talking about the shape of a parabola or the shape of a quadratic graph. There's the first thing. Let's talk about vertex next. What is a vertex? It is the lowest or highest point on the parabola. So vertex is the lowest or highest point of a parabola. So if you take a look at these two graphs Lowest or highest point? Well, it depends on which way the parabola faces. For a parabola that's facing up or opening up, the lowest point on the parabola is found right here. And then if you look at a parabola that's facing down or opening down, now it's the highest point on the parabola. So we'll go ahead and draw an arrow to this to show this is what our vertex is. All right, let's continue. I'm going to move over to this side. Axis of symmetry. What's the axis of symmetry? The axis of symmetry is a vertical, a vertical line that goes through the vertex. A vertical line that goes through the vertex and divides the parabola and divides the parabola into two reflected, I'm going to underline that word, You've learned about reflection a little bit last year into, not reflection, into two reflected 
And let's underline that word. We have that word. The two reflected halves. And another way to define the axis of symmetry is something simple here. It's just the x value. It's the x value of the vertex. If you know the x value of the vertex of a parabola or a quadratic, you'll always know where the axis of symmetry is. So I'm going to go ahead and use green. And let's see, here's our vertex on graph number one. That means the axis of symmetry will pass vertically straight down through the vertex and continues on through. Now take a look at those properties. I'm going to draw an arrow to show this is where the axis of symmetry is. If you look at this line class, passes through the vertex. This vertex is at negative 2, negative 3, so negative 2 is the x value of the vertex. The equation for this axis of symmetry is actually, and let's write this, it's actually x equals negative 2. That comes from the x value of the vertex. And this, take a look at this line also, it divides the parabola exactly into two reflected halves. If you drew this side of the parabola, if you were able to graph that side, you don't even have to figure out any points on this side. You can just reflect this across that green dashed line and you'll end up with the other half of the parabola. So that is the axis of symmetry. Let's come on over to the other side and talk about the y-intercept. The y-intercept is where... Now it's getting really messy. Sorry about this. I'm rushing a little bit because I'm going to run out of time. I'll have to start another video. The y-intercept is where the parabola touches the y-axis. We could also say crosses the y-axis. Let's use the word crosses. Where the parabola crosses the y-axis. You can take a look on this particular one. I'll go ahead and label this in red so you see it. Here is our y-intercept and I'll draw a red arrow to it so you see that goes together. There is our y-intercept. The purple dot was the vertex. The red is where the parabola crosses the y-axis. Let's take a look at x-intercepts. Those should make sense to you. X-intercepts are where, where the parabola crosses the x-axis. I'll spell that right. Where the parabola Let's actually say touches in this case, because sometimes our parabola won't continue below the x-axis. So where the parabola touches the x-axis. So in this case, if you look at this one, I'll go ahead and label these in green. We've got two x-intercepts here. There's one and there's the other one. It's not always the case, but in this case, we have an x-intercept there, and we have an x-intercept there. All right, I'll go ahead and because this video is already um, about uh, 10 minutes long or 9 minutes long, I'm going to pause this video or stop it, and we'll start up again with the second half.